Hey guys, welcome back to We Watch Movie. I am Mike, and this is the spoiler review for In a Violent Nature. If you haven't seen the movie yet, check out the original review that I did just recently, and I'm going to go right into spoilers, so just don't watch this if you haven't seen the movie. Honestly, there's not... <clears throat> If, if, I'll say this. If the movie's not available near you, it's going to be in Shudder uh, before too long. It's going to be on Shudder, so it'll be, be available to watch there. But I know it's it's a semi-limited. Like, it's playing in a couple theaters around here, but you gotta you do got to kind of seek it out a little bit. So I'll say this. It, there's not a whole lot of crazy spoilers. I don't think any of it's going to ruin the movie for anybody who hasn't seen it. So the choice is yours, as always. It's like anybody listens to me anyway. It's like, F you, dude. I don't care about spoilers. Go eat a d somewhere with Patrick the Frog. As I said in the original review, I enjoyed the movie for what it was. I do think that some will find it painfully slow, and there was times where I was checking my watch too. I think it definitely needed some editing. I think it definitely needed some dynamics. And by editing, I mean points where we watch him walk in a room and, and have to walk across the floor to get something. And we have to watch every step and thought, whereas they could have just edited it out and had him standing there when he walked in. You know, little stuff like that that really would have taken off of the fatigue that we felt sometimes watching this movie because it's so ASMR. But you've seen the movie, so I won't explain all that. I just say that I liked it. And yeah, one of the main things I liked was the from the get-go, the very way it started, it had me thinking. It, 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 it was really cool when you hear these people's voices talking and they're in this cabin out in the woods or whatever, like not a cabin, more of a dilapidated shed sort of deal. And they find this necklace and they pick it up and you just know it's like, oh, fuck, that was that was probably important to him. And now he's going to eat your butt. But these these people walk away and you hear their voices as they go away. And immediately the ASMR of the sounds is so cool. Like it all sounds so interesting. At first, as you're settling in, you're like, man, I could spend some time here. Turns out not quite as much time as they make us spend in these moments, but it's just super satisfying the way the sounds and everything work. But the way that the ground starts to move and there's like this there's this like steel thing into the ground. And at this point, I don't know that he's not supernatural. You know what I mean? We're going to find that out for sure later, but at this point you don't know. So I'm thinking, whoa, is he in there using that hole to breathe? God, Mike, is he in there using that? <laughs> I told you only on the weekends. Um, is he using that thing to breathe out of? <laughs> Stop doing this when he's under the leaves or whatever. I don't know how that works. Is he hibernating? Did he take like some NyQuil so he could just sleep? Are there people hunting him and that's how he hides? He just burrows into the ground? What's going on here? Uh, what is he, Steven Seagal? Like old Steven Seagal, who probably said that he could do that. He's like, you know, if you just burrow into the ground and breathe through a pipe. I did that for six months one winter. <laughs> Some shit that he would say. I don't know. But the ground starts shaking and he crawls himself out and immediately crawls out. It's this big hulking fuck. Now, he's not like steroid huge. He does look like he kind of has a beer belly or something, just the way he looks at times, depending on where he's shot. No one knows how the hell he got that big. You know what I mean? Like, what's he doing? Like, lifting rocks? Is he, is he really worried about putting on weight? Where's he getting all the food to sustain that amount of protein? I don't know, but... As we find out as the movie goes on, and this is what I love about it, I love the way that they build up this this whole world for this new, maybe one day can be another iconic slasher that we have, depending on if they ever do a sequel, how many sequels they do. It's built for that, for sure. But I love the way they build him up. You know, when he starts walking around, and the first thing you hear is this is very video game-ish. This, this moment was some of the worst at acting in the movie, and it was mostly voice acting. But as soon as he you hear it off in the distance, and you're like, oh, walk over here and let's see what's going on. It's just like playing a video game. Like, you're controlling this big bitch. And that's what it feels like. So you walk over there with him, and he goes into the house. And I said this in the original review. It's not nearly as POV as we all keep saying. It, it's... It's more like you're like three feet behind him. It's it's from the angle of his back, not like his eyes or anything like that. But he walks into the shed and there's a cop arguing with this just absolutely like the most generic asshole dude in the woods you've ever seen in your life. He has a, even has a hat that says number one motherfucker. And he's like, you come out here again and I'll show you something with all my rifles. <laughs> and it's just very, very like the, the writing there is so generic and kind of video gamey. It's weird. Uh, like, you're like nobody would ever be able to say these things to anyway that's it's just side the point it's just noticeable but yeah one of the first like really artsy things they do is when he goes to kill this guy his hands reaching towards him and the guy tr trips and falls in one of his own animal traps right but though you know when the hand comes towards him and you're finally going to get see this dude get to kill this guy and you still haven't seen the guy's face yet by the way the monster dude the slasher and 
they show his hand reaching out and then all of a sudden the, the same hand is covered in blood in front of the camera and it's reaching out to grab a pendant that he thought was the pendant that got taken from him that woke him out of his hibernation slumber because they took his you know his fucking necklace but and then you know that he died so like that's a kill they didn't even show which i was shocked by i was like okay we're not even going to show this kill i wonder how often we're going to do that but they did that in such a cool way because then we see him walk and like he hears something and i'm thinking in my head that if i was him i'd be going oh shit well i guess i'm going that way it's like he's literally a detective now he has no idea where this goddamn necklace has gone to. But there's a really cool and also still video gamey shot when he's in that dude's shed where he looks at uh, this like mirror or whatever and his dad comes into it and he's like handing him the necklace or whatever and you, you get the idea of why it's important to it. But it's just cool how the movie fills us in on the details as we go along. And a lot of times they're periphery, like we're just finding them out by hearing someone talk about something or watching these campers in the woods tell their campfire stories. The way the movie unravels its plot and details was super cool to me. But yeah, and then he goes walking and he hears the noise. He's like, I guess you better go that way. And he's like, Rrr. you know, he doesn't talk actually, but he moves that way. And it's like, go, you big dumb bitch. Can you walk a little faster, please? For fuck's sake, have a monster energy drink. Christ. But he finally gets there. And just the idea of that's fascinating. You know, this unstoppable force is just moving through the fucking woods and eventually it's going to get to you. It's sort of, it follows ish in that way if you think about it long and hard enough <laughs> long and hard but he gets there and we meet the campers and they are literally just i mean they're fine like the acting's not that bad or anything like that they're just you know your average 2024 i don't want to say millennial gen x i don't know who gives a shit all that stuff's dumb but like you know they're just people sitting around a campfire and they don't seem like that fun of a group to be honest with you like I didn't hate them, but also I was like, man, this party fucking sucks. This Is this what kids do now? You guys aren't very fun or, or, you know, tell a funny fucking story or something. But one kid does. He tells the story. It's not a funny story of of this guy, uh, of our killer. And it's, yeah, is it generic and, and the same thing in so many other horror movies? Sure. You know, the, the whole story, I won't relay it if you've seen it here. But, you know, basically this kid was slow. And he got fucked over really, really bad. And they lured him to the top of a water tower and scared him with this old firehouse mask. And as soon as I heard that, I was like, that's going to be his fucking mask. Because I totally forgot about seeing it in the trailer. But I was like, ooh, I wonder what that's going to look like. Because at this point, you could tell he doesn't have a mask on. But, and then they knocked him out of it. And then the, they ended up killing his dad and a whole bunch of fucked up shit happened. But I thought it was interesting in the story. It's the spirit um, and by the way, it sets up perfectly for a prequel because it talks about how they found all these big ass lumberjacks like ripped to shreds and the entire like community or whatever was murdered and killed. And they just kind of closed the books on it because they want to stay away from lawsuits and whatever and went away. But there was always this, you know, uh, always these crazy stories about this. I think it was a pine wood pine knob. Fuck. I can't remember, but you know, if you've seen it, but. That's, that sets up totally for a prequel, especially since you find out later that the sheriff guy's dad survived it. So that's going to be really interesting to see if they decide to tell that prequel story or go forward with this story with more sequels or if they do a sequel at all. But I just I don't know. There's something like, you know, nostalgic and just like cozy about that story being so unoriginal and something we've heard so many times before. They're literally giving us Jason fucking Voorhees in front of our eyes. And I, but I do think it's interesting as shit that he said the spirit of, of that kid came back uh, because it kind of sets up the whole supernatural ordeal, which I, I mean, this guy's got to be supernatural, right? Like we see him do some wild shit. Like he goes, and I think honestly, even though you don't even see it amidst the cool ass kills, one of my favorite kills in the movie is when those two girls are talking about all the stuff they're going to do to each other's vaginas later. And he's on the other side of the pond watching them and like, whatever, fuck you. I'm not a body of water. Ologist. He's, he's across from me. He's standing there watching me. He just kind of slowly walks into the water and just walks underneath it. Just like fucking Jason would. And their conversation continues and it's a pretty long Creek or whatever, swimming pool, whatever. And you forget he's under there. Because they're still just talking. The one girl walks away to go do her yoga. The other one's still there. And all of a sudden, it, it, it was it sort of underwhelming that she just got kind of yanked underwater suddenly? But when she did, I went, oh, fuck, that's right. He was in the goddamn water. His big bitch ass just walk swam all the way over there without breathing 
uh, and, and pulled her ass under and killed her. And then you see him, obviously, I love the fact that he, the old school slasher thing, when he gets shot a couple times, it stops him. You can slow him down with a shot and he'll fall down. Then a couple minutes later, he just sits back up. And again, we've seen this done so many times before, but at this point, it just, I don't know, man, it feels like a warm blanket to see just a killer like that be born. And the, the one dude who's a huge cunt face McGregorton gets it uh, in an awesome way. He gets, he gets his leg cut. And then those guys were so fucking dumb though. Like when his friend tries to walk off with him, cause he's got the hurt leg or whatever. And his friend catches and he just gets up, picks up the axe and goes, mm, and just immediately kills the dude. Just like no fucking effort whatsoever. It was so nonchalant. Like he was picking up a fucking gas pump, just bloop, axe in the back of the dude's head. He goes down. Bam, Sid, super bitch. Um, and but the guy didn't even grab the gun. He just laid there. It was like, oh, stop, don't. A lot of the characters in this were really, really dumb with the way that they could have gotten out of this. But they didn't matter. It's all focused on our killer. And he smashes his head with a rock, which was you know pretty quick and to the point. But and I'm trying to think. Obviously, the yoga scene kill, which we, which I, I saw, I did see that one beforehand. Uh, and for some reason on a bigger screen, it just, uh, in an HD, it made me actually kind of sick to my stomach. Just the way that the neck, that bone popped in the neck. And what he does, if you don't know, is he walks up to her while she's doing yoga. That bitch could have fucking footloosed her ass down, not footloose, but hot rotted her way down that hill. She could have rolled down that bitch and gotten away, but she just completely froze. He punches through her stomach. <laughs> he punches through her stomach. And then with like this fucking thing and then puts the hook in her head because she just stands there and looks at him like a goddamn dumb I mean, what are you gonna do but he puts the hook in her head and then he pulls the hook with her head on it through her own stomach and through her stomach like a knot a goose uh and it's the whoa like the sounds on that it's just nasty as hell you know uh i i, I Everybody keeps comparing this movie to, to Terrifier and all that stuff. And I'm like, first off, that's not the only movie to ever have extreme gore in it. Uh, and it's a completely different kind of gore and kills. Like, the mood is completely different. The vibe is completely different. I, I just don't find the two that comparable at all. Uh, and completely different murders and everything. So, but it was it was, it, it was an all-timer kill, just like I said before. It was, it was amazing. Really gross. Don't want to watch it again. I uh, do want to watch it again. Don't want to eat SpaghettiOs while you watch it, that's for sure. But... Um, and there's another kill where dude's really, that dude, how stupid was that fucking guy? The guy who just goes, Hey, I'm standing behind you fucker. And then he turns around and axes him. And I think even our Jason 2.0 was really fucking pissed about how dumb this dumb dick was. Uh, it's like emo Levi jeans guy, you know? Uh, he was such a fucking idiot to do that, but <laughs> just keeps axing him and he's hitting his face. And I think this was an underrated kill. Yeah. He's just bashing him in the face with an ax for sure, but he just keeps going and there's just more blood and shit going everywhere and just fucking <laughs> fakaka everywhere. And then he just keeps going. Meanwhile, the girl, I guess the trap was to get him there, get him to walk into the trap when he's getting his necklace or whatever. Just, it's kind of dumb in my opinion, but then our, our final girl or whatever, I guess, uh, had the pendant sitting on a gas can, uh, the one that he was looking for, his mom, dad's chain, whatever. And <laughs> he's still, even when she's over there doing shit, like five minutes later, it's still, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. I mean, he's beating this dude's face, just completely incinerating it. Like, there's nothing there by the time he's done. It is evaporated into the fucking atmosphere by the time he gets done hitting this dude. It was, I was cracking up at this point. Um, but it was laughable how long it went on. For sure. It was like the fight and they live kind of. I like the look of him. Like I like that old fireman's mask. It's sort of silly looking. Um, but I like that when he takes it back off again, his head is just there. And I like that version of him better. It just really reminds me of Jason. But I, I like both in their own ways. What shocked me was, and again, this building of this character that's really cool. When you start to learn what he can do, that he's supernatural, what he does when there's nobody over there, what his backstory is. It was really cool to find out. I would love to, on a flip side, it, if they made a sequel to this and didn't do this slow, artsy thing and kind of made it more of a standard traditional slasher film that cuts back and forth between his point of view and maybe an actual interesting final girl or guy that's likable. I think that's the perfect mix to take away from the slowness but still have the coolness and the beautiful shots and shit like that. 
But I was shocked when they did this. He picks up a, a toy car because the guy throws his keys in the woods and it's got a toy car in it. And he picks it up and immediately you can tell he's like, oh, he's a, he's, a, he's a fucking child. Like he's still a kid in his head, this big ass guy. But it's sort of pumpkin head ish, too, if you think about it. The fact that it's this kid's spirit in this body. I don't know how exactly you explain that, but yeah, he's like a tool of vengeance, basically. It kind of feels like. But you no, know, he sits down and the camera, beautiful fucking shot, fades out from the blur. And you see his entire fucking face. And he's got shit missing from his mouth. He's ugly as fuckaroni and cheese. I mean, he's goddamn hideous. But uh, it's also endearing to look at. He starts, he's like kind of smiling. He's like, oh, it's a fucking cop car. <laughs> you know? Uh, it's, it's weird as shit to see. But I was I was fascinated by that. The makeup looked fa- fantastic. The special effects crew on this and the DP and the sound people on this and the director just fucking knocked it out of the park. I mean, all those things. Despite how you feel about how slow the movie it was, uh, and, and how much that p- part of it grated on your nerves, that was done. That was all fucking top notch. I can't wait to see what everyone does next. But the thing I didn't like that happened was I, I got a little scared in my booty hole because this cop shows up and he starts adding all this extra exposition. And he was like, and that to be honest with you, I just I wasn't, I didn't think the acting was that great from this guy at all. I, it felt you know, just like it had in the scene earlier, but he's like, I was there because my dad was there and he used to not believe the stories, but now I do because I was here and I'm going to put you back and like all this stuff. And it's like, I think we've, I think we got just really tired of that trope with the Halloween trilogy. I think with the Jamie Lee Curtis stuff and all that, I think it just like really wore out its welcome. So if you're going to do a final girl or guy, <coughs> I, I, I'm definitely more leaning towards what we're doing with terrifier right uh with with her and, and things like that i think it was that was a little too tropeish for me that's something that i'm not nostalgic about right now was that type of character um we have enough of that i feel like but anyway that was just me i was very happy when he died and did he die in the most horrendous of ways that was crazy so i'm guessing he pulls on his back like he cracks his back and like the guy's he's awake because he's like his eyes are open he's blinking but he can't move I guess he can't even fucking speak because he's completely silent the whole way. And, but he snaps his back like that. And then he drags him and puts him in this log splitter, which I didn't even know was a fucking thing. I kind of wish I didn't now. It was so fucked up. It was just, it was just a really weird vibe and mood. Uh, but a really cool, well thought out kill because he goes in this room and it's just like this generator type of like gas ran log splitter. And the whole time it's just like, jigga, 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 jigga. What am I doing? <laughs> That's a huge dick. Um, <laughs> oh, geez, this is Shaq's dick. Um, sorry, Shaq. Sorry, everyone. But it, it's running the entire time, and just like in the ASMR of this scene, is crazy as well because he's just taking his time. He's, he's just you know, just fucking taking taking all the time in the world. He puts his arm in it, and this thing just moves out. This long, like axe thing moves out and just slowly chops it into his arm and like just snaps it off clean and the blood fills the floor and he picks him up again calmly puts his head in it and we just watch this thing and where he's awake but he's not moving or reacting at all to this or screaming or anything it just gives you a weird feeling it's kind of just creepy because he's just sitting there just calm as shit as this thing slowly comes towards him and eventually forces its way through his head and decapitates him (laughs) really fucked up shit uh and yeah it it was it was cool as shit man um, we're a fucked up group of people. We are, we are, but what I didn't like after that was she escapes, right? She gets away and this is kind of non-linear. I'm telling, I'm jumping around a little bit, but at the end of the movie is what I absolutely did not like at all. I thought that that was a real fucking bummer because you, you kind of much, all the stuff I love about the movie up to that point, you have greater on the nerves a little bit with a little extra walk you know, fucking around, not, you know, just taking forever. And now she runs out into the street. It's very Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but it's ridiculous because she, he doesn't even cause this. She falls and she hurts herself. She, she gets a, a stick in her leg or whatever. And then the lady picks her up. And this woman who was a really good actress, the woman driving the car. And it's kind of like that scene in Tropic Thunder. Like you're a true American, you're a patriot and you're a hero, but shut the fuck up. It's kind of how I felt like we're in this car and she picks her up and she saves her and they're driving and you just know this is a horror movie. 
Okay, he's going to be in the middle of the road. He's going to be hanging on the top of the car. He's going to come running out of the street. What are they going to do? And you're on the edge of your seat. It's anxiety fueled as fuck. But it feels like an eternity. It feels like 15 fucking minutes that we're just watching them drive down the road having this conversation. And she's like, you sure you're okay? Stay awake. And she tells this crazy story about her uncle and a bear and a fucking pipe from Nantucket. I don't give a shit. What, when is it going to fucking come from already? Jesus Christ already. I need this. Let's go, man. Uh, and, and it just doesn't, <laughs> it never fucking happens. She stops the car to help her with her leg. And we just listen to this lady babble on. And all this shit happened. And she just looks out into the woods. And then they, they do the Halloween thing where they show this section of the woods. And then they show that section of the woods. And they show a grown man's penis. They didn't do that. It probably would have been more entertaining than what was actually happening in that moment. But uh, we just, the movie just fucking ends. And I, I thought it was just the worst ending. Uh, especially the way you dragged that ending out the way you did. Uh, it did not do this movie any fucking favors at all. But I'd hate to end it on a negative note. I cannot wait to see what they do with this franchise in the future. I hope they turn this into a franchise, I should say, because that's what these things are built for, right? And I just love the look of this guy. I, I like his story. I like everything about him. Love the way he kills. And I, I, I'm fascinated and I'm totally on board for whatever they do next. I hope that they will choose to take this style. I hope that either they'll go crazy and, and try to do something new and super experimentational with every sequel, or on the flip side of that, I hope that they take this and use it to always tell tell the story from his point of view this way when we're watching him, but to also create fascinating characters that you can tell in a traditional story and mix the two together to make it more entertaining. I think that's your special sauce right there, folks. But it's a 7.5 for me. I really enjoyed it, and I hope you guys did too. And I'm, fuck, I'm sure I'm missing something. Whatever I missed to talk about, we'll talk about it in the comments below and on the next live stream of which we have a Patreon live stream tonight. You can sign up for the Patreon and join us for free with like a seven day trial or some shit. So do that shit. What are you waiting for? I love your all's fucking faces. Come party with us tonight. Let me know what your all's thoughts on the movie are, were down below and uh, have a great fucking day. Hello, listener. Do you like scary movies? What's your favorite scary movie? Well, Jay and Mike like scary movies, too. You should go and subscribe to their podcast. We watched a movie. Because if you don't, I'll gut you like a... Well, I think you get the idea. Enjoy yourselves while you still can.